Okay, uh, very good evening. Uh, welcome to the project presentation of Batch 6, St. Thomas Residential School. Uh, on behalf of Bbox Labs, I welcome everyone who's watching this on YouTube live. So to start the proceedings, we will uh, start with Nakul, Nakul Sham. Okay, Nakul, uh, I'll spotlight you and then you can uh, share your screen and you can proceed. Okay, so good evening everyone uh, my name is nagul shyam uh, i'm studying in saint thomas residential school in class 8a and today i'm going to speak about a project it's a it's an it's a thing that we've experienced or seen at least in almost every street we've seen it at least like before two years back it's nothing else but starvation due to poverty so what is starvation due to poverty like in every state we go there might be at least one man or woman who is begging for some food because she cannot afford it he or she cannot afford it and every time i see it i feel a little pity because it's so sad to see that like one person cannot eat at least once a day so the contents of my uh, project are the inspiration, the materials required, the purpose, implementation, as well as the advantages and disadvantages. So my inspiration behind the project was like uh, I had gone to a like I had gone for a holiday and my family and I were traveling. Uh, while we were traveling, we saw an old man. He was just by the side of the road and was just begging for food, like a morsel of food. He was very old and he was literally shivering over there because he didn't get food at least for the past two or three days. And I was like so pity for him that I asked my parents to give me some money so that I can give him, give the money and so that he can buy the food from a nearby restaurant. So when I had given him the money, he was so happy that his face couldn't have any other expressions. Like he was so happy, he couldn't express it. And once he had gone to the restaurant, we had followed him. And uh, at the same restaurant, I saw another man. He seemed very rich because, like, the style he was, the food, the clothes he was wearing, and the things he had, it seemed as if he was very rich. And apparently, he had ordered a lot, but uh, he couldn't finish it. So, what every other person would do is that if you cannot finish it, you'd parcel it and bring it home. But instead of parceling it, he just left it and went. And I was actually very stunned to see how much food he had just wasted. Like there were three or four plates of food just there. And the waiter just took it to put it in the dustbin. And that's when I thought, instead of wasting that food, how can I make it available for the poor and needy? And that's what led me to this project. So the materials required for the project are some determined and hardworking minds that are willing to take on such a project and some leaders that I'll explain why we need leaders. The purpose is actually pretty straightforward. We're going to try to send each poor person with food. Like he or she can have at least three meals a day. And for that, we are going to use the food that people don't want or they didn't use and give that to the poor and needy. Like you might feel now that the food we don't want is like waste and that we are giving to them. But I'm pretty sure that we would have, we cannot have another per, like a reason or like any other method of giving that food to them but still it will satisfy them with the full belly and along with this we are also going to have some specific people that is the leaders i said that are going to cook some food like in a large quantity so that they can distribute in a large scale and along with that we'll be also using the food that was left behind together and keep them in food banks so each person like each person who is on the street who cannot afford food can go to this food bank and have their free i mean have their food free of course and uh, as this is for the poor only those people who need food should eat at the food bank so the implementation of the project so we're going to be impl implementing facilities known as food banks so food banks are nothing but places where a huge number of food will be stored having the necessary prerequisites like refrigerators microwaves and dispensable utensils and plates and like with the coming age of technology and all we i would like to make it more modern 
so we are going to be implementing like fully automated food banks which will automatically serve food to the needy and before each person gets his food if it's a hot food like if you're having a rice and curry you would obviously want it to be a little hot so we'll microwave it or if you're having something cold like salad or something like that you would need it to be stored in proper refrigerator refrigeration so it will be built according to that and each food bank will be built in each city village and town at a common location so that each person can easily go there and have food so the advantages of my project is that a major percentage of the food that is being prepared at hotels and everywhere is going to be utilized without anything being wasted and we'll be able to reach out to the poor and give them at least three meals a day but la and lastly all the people who give their food will be happy about being able to at least contribute some food to the people who need it and it can also reduce the number of starving people in our country like every project has advantages it also has disadvantages and the disadvantages of this project is like the current situation like during pandemics like the one we are facing now the idea of sharing food and going out is not practical so to counter that instead of people going to the restaurants and giving whatever they don't want what we'll be doing is we'll be asking every each and every house in the country for a small part of food which can satisfy at least one person and we will be assuring that we'll be storing it with utmost safety and ensure that it doesn't affect any person with any such disease like we will only ask houses who are known to have no contact with any people who have diseases and for like for people to uh, give more food like to promote each person to give at least a food packet we'll be giving 20 rupees for each food packet each house will provide and that was my project and thank you for your valuable time siddharth kumar gopal will now present his project hi so hope you can all see my screen so i hi i am siddharth kumar gopal studying in class 8e in st thomas residential school and so the agenda for this powerpoint presentation is the inspiration behind the project the materials needed and the project itself the plastic recycling kiosk and the advantages and challenges so the inspiration behind the project was the kerala floods in 2018 when i saw that a lot of plastic which was earlier deposited in water bodies ended up back in the roads and also when i researched about it i found out that plastics entering water bodies pose a serious hazard for aquatic animals and decrease the efficiency of photosynthesis in aquatic plants and plankton which contribute the maximum to oxygen in the atmosphere and due to biomagnification we also get affected by plastic pollution in oceans and the root cause of plastic pollution is because of careless dumping of plastic waste on road sides and water bodies the concept that the plastics that are being dumped on roads affecting aquatic plants and animals may be too abstract for people to take positive action towards responsible plastic plastic disposal so i thought whether there could be any better way as more scientific way for plastic disposal can people be inspired to dispose of plastic waste more responsibly and then i got the idea that we could use a plastic recycling kiosk a kiosk to deposit plastic waste in exchange for an item so the materials that are needed for this project is a weighing scale a gift storage unit ultrasound sensors a waste storage unit servo motors arduino uno idec plastic material sensors keypads lcd monitors gps and gsm modules and also a camera so how this project will work is that a person walks to the plastic recycling kiosk a built in camera clicks the picture of the item to be deposited if the item is plastic then the item is allowed to be deposited in the kiosk and about how we will know whether the item is plastic with the help of the ai programs that um, we have learned we could feed the computer a variety of images and teach it to identify what is plastic and what is not so we have a preliminary identification check of whether the item is plastic or not 
So if the AI decides that the item is plastic, then the depositing bag, uh, depositing box opens, and the person is allowed to insert the item into the plastic waste into the depositing box. And after that, built-in weighing sensors and built-in weighing scales and sensors determine the weight and the quality of the plastics that are deposited. Based on the value of the plastic deposited, a gift is given out by the vending machine with the help of the LCD monitor and the keypad. The LCD monitor will show the number of op will show the options of the gifts that can be redeemed, and you can click on one gift with the help of a keypad. Additional mechanism using GPS or GSM module to alert when the plastic waste holding module is full or when the gift module is empty can be used so that um, gifts can be inserted or the plastic waste can be taken on manually. And this collected plastic waste can be given to recycling or upcycling companies or organizations. So the advantages of this project is that there is lesser plastic pollution at public places and in oceans and landfills which help to conserve the earth because of plastic collection by the plastic kiosk. It also eliminates the need for rack pickers, a huge section of society that are discriminated against and also consists of a large number of children who can aspire for their dreams with the help of education that becomes available thanks to the plastic kiosk. Usually when your parents are rack pickers, the children also tend to follow the same pattern and do not get the necessary education that they need to aspire for their dreams. So, due to the time that they get, due to the elimination of the need for rack pickers thanks to the plastic kiosk, they can focus on their dreams thanks to education. The plastic collected can be given to organizations who upcycle plastics to form products such as sunglasses, footwear, skateboard, pens and pencils. It also helps families that are below the poverty line as they can deposit plastics that they find in roads and buildings near them and can get items that will help them in day-to-day -day survival. The, the challenges are the cost of implementing plastic chaos in multiple locations, establishing the reverse logistic supply chain, bringing about behavioral change in the people, to take the plastic, to, to collect the plastic waste near them and to bring it to the plastic kiosk and the ability to ensure that only plastics are deposited. The ability to ensure that only plastics are deposited can, uh, we can actually ensure that only plastics are deposited with the help of the IDEC, Plastic Material Sensor, which helps us to identify whether the, uh, the item that is inserted in the depositing box is actually plastic, and it can also differentiate between the different types of plastics, like PVC, polyethylene, PET, and so on. And so, and lastly, thank you to um, to by to uh, ATL Labs for uh, giving me an opportunity to showcase my idea, and also uh, thank you to my mentor, Mr. Shashwat Watts, for giving me the information and the knowledge that is required for such a project. And uh, thank you for all the uh, for all my friends for giving me for giving me the attention. Thank you. Okay, Siddharth, very well presented. Uh, again, it is evident that you put in a lot of effort in conducting the research. Okay, so keep it up. Good day, everyone and all. I am Devan Anditapi of Class A, St. Thomas Western Indian School. The name of the project that I am going to tell you is Collector. Collector means a reader, a reader of lectures. It is a mobile app for reading aloud the text content of a picture taken using our mobile camera. My inspiration for the project the lecture came back when I looked back searching for something that I thought would make an enhancement. I realized that there are many occasions in our daily life that when there is a necessity for an app to read the text aloud from a paper or an image, in my life, many occasions present in itself, planting the idea in my mind. I would have a younger brother whom sometimes I need to teach. Often, we see with my school works and other classes, I fail to teach him, telling him to read his text or to write his note or do whatever he wants. Afterwards, feeling guilty, I hope for someone or somebody to help him read all of his texts. 
And once in a while, when my mother is pretty busy, she asks me to read her the newspaper. I found the task to be laborious on weekdays, juggling all the school rush, works, and other classes. Or when helping my mother to make notices or emails, I mean, I may need to refer to some text or sheet of paper. It was a constant bother to check between the text and where I need to write. All these in this incidents inspired me to come up with this idea to create the Prelector app. This app, um, in which where when you take a picture, the app will read aloud the text contents of the picture. Project Prelector. Prelector is a mobile application. It reads the text in a captured picture using features like text recognition by camera text, speech, and others. This app can be of a great help to our students with our assignments and others, and can be of a great support to visually impaired people. It can be of a great help in our busy lives with our tasks. The steps that are needed are downloading the app, using the app to capture a focused picture of the, of a, of the sheet or page. The app processes the text in the picture and converts the text to speech and out outputs it. The materials required are an Android smartphone, the app collector. The advantage is what we already use for this purpose is asking for help from those around us or doing it by ourselves. I know of Chrome extensions that read the things aloud from the web, but most do not have the feature to read the, te the text from a picture. The advantage of the lecture app is that it can read text from a paper. It can be used by our mobile. The app can be of a great help in our busy life by reading aloud articles while we continue with our other tasks. It can be used by anyone with the app. It is a huge help to all group, age groups. I will show you a demonstration of the collector app. You open the app, take the picture, and click read. Hope you can hear the voice. This is the demonstration. Drawbacks of this project. Handwritten pages may not be read correctly. Some pronunciations may not be correct. May not be correct. If the picture is not taken properly, it will not be read. It is only available now in Android mobiles. This app does not interpret other languages. That some of these drawbacks can be rectified in updates or newer versions of the app. Improvements that I think are needed in the app. The app needs a function that allows the user to save the content as an MP3 or as a Word document. I need to make the app available across iOS, Windows, Mac, and other platforms. The app should be able to repeat the selected part of the text content. The app should be able to read other languages and can translate it into another la required language. The user can change the type of voice in which the text is read. It can be changed according to his or her preference. These are some, some of the improvements that I hope to include in the future updates of the app. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank the ATL team, our teachers, and school for giving this opportunity opportunity to present my own idea without any restrictions. I would like to express my gratitude to my family and friends for supporting me. And thank you, one and all, present here. Thank okay. Uh, very well done, uh, Devanandita. Okay. So let's move forward with the presentation. Okay, next is Hridaya Nair. Hridaya, I'll spotlight you and you can proceed with your presentation. 
ओके सर थैंक यू सर a uh, very good evening to all of you i would like to uh, present my project which is ocean waste management or beach cleaning for to clean the plastic waste or any sort of waste from our beaches uh, and i would like to apologize uh, in uh, as an advance for the amount of stuttering that i am about to give you uh, this is the agenda that uh, this is the amount of things that i'm going to talk about i'm going to talk about certain facts about ocean pollution on why i chose the topic and how to prevent ocean pollution my project the organization that helps save the ocean some advantages and some disadvantages and a certain after thought project uh, some facts about ocean pollution trash from manufactured products mainly plastic pose a danger to sea animals and humans then there are microplastic which are so tiny they are only 5 mm in diameter Uh, these um, microplastics are more prone for uh, marine animals uh, to eat which in turn we happen to eat that marine animal this in say a fish a fish happens to eat the marine uh, the microplastic and we happen to consume the certain fish so in turn we ourselves eat the plastic then a 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic waste is estimated to be in our ocean plastic takes about 500 to 1000 years or uh, mainly 450 years to degrade a lot of marine animals die every day or every year and a lot of them just because of plastic waste next is why i chose the topic the reason why i chose the topic is because i i have been longing to talk about this and uh, people are so ignorant and reluctant to actually do something about it and i i would like to do something to change it that is sort of the main aim of my project to spread awareness about the pro about everything that's happening uh, i i didn't want to just let it flow by next are some interventions to prevent ocean pollution uh, then there is waste water management waste water management is when uh, you say you have a waste water then we uh, make waste water infrastructure so that we can uh, to control waste water disposal facilities then there are storm water management so by implementing storm water and storm drain facilities filtration and, and river more trash collection and to adopt green chemistry practices and new materials this is uh, this is banning hard to manage substances such as exp expanded polystyrene which is the uh, common bag the plastic which you see in this uh, covering bags then to practice radical resource efficiency to recover and recycle and to avoid sunday to avoid products containing micro beads micro beads are like micro plastics and they are so tiny again uh, being thrown to uh, for marine animals to eat them next is my project the project is a beach clean up it is not that innovative uh, i do understand that but the main project Uh, is to create uh, uh, the sort of organization in your local area so that you can uh, the main aim of this whole uh, whole organization is to educate everybody especially schools on the awareness to aware make them aware of this project of this whole thing so that uh, they do not ever dispose uh, plastic waste on the oceans or any water bodies next is the waste bins to uh, in in mainly beaches especially beaches we would uh, implement waste bins everywhere for recyclable and non recyclable uh, products and we work on uh, money from donations or from sponsors uh, everywhere just everywhere around the beaches where we have waste bins here and there uh, all the guys and then we also make sure that authorities will never uh, have waste uh, waste any sort of waste to get dumped in water or ocean bod uh, bodies ever again next are disadvantages the advantages are the ones that are sort of obvious where there is a cleaning of ocean that people coming together for a bigger cause to fight a bigger cause etc but one huge disadvantage that i see is the encouragement of people people are reluctant to pick up or to actually do anything about uh, the uh, problem that we are facing And that is one border that i think that i will face during this whole project 
next are some organization that help save our ocean i would i really appreciate it if i all of us would go and support these organizations the first there is a new the ocean conservancy which is a us based group which focuses on educating the public and there's a surf rider foundation which is a grassroots non profit environmental organization dedicated to protection of oceans and beaches around the world sea shepherd conservation society carries out operations that are involved direct and non lethal tactics then there is a take three a clean beach initiative uh, it's an on it's a australian based non profitable organ non profit organization then there's a green peace organization which is the most successful in uh, work in the working of area of oceans next uh, is a afterthought project so the first thing that came to my mind when i was thinking of this project is the class that we took in this atl lab for introduction to machine learning on code.org and when we did that i wanted to make the project into real life but i was not sure or whether it had already been done so i didn't want, but i didn't want to just let it flow by like i never thought of this idea so i wanted to put it in this presentation just to uh, put that idea out there so the uh, presentation is uh, so i did this uh, do some prototypes on this but uh, it is very badly drawn uh, these are my prototypes this is uh, the, from the top this is from the bottom so i'm thinking that in the bottom it will be sort of like a flower sort of thing which would uh, when we can scan i have absolutely no idea how that is going to happen because i don't know anything about electronics so when we scan we can uh, differentiate that was a project that we did during the classes to differentiate between marine life and the plastic waste or any sort of waste so uh, then the flaw i said uh, here the flaw will come out Uh, just like i got the idea from the claw machine we see in our local malls and from the jcb which uh, will take, it will take the waste it will get inside just like any normal uh, claw machine that was sort of my idea but i wasn't sure it had already been done so i put it put it in a like sort of an afterthought project uh, so this is the end of my slide i don't know i think i might have gone a little too fast on my presentation Uh, i want to thank everyone who supported me to my school my family my friends and for atl lab for giving me an opportunity to talk and do a presentation on this important subject that is awareness uh, thank you everyone okay very well presented shweta you had tried to address a global problem you know which has a global impact obviously there's no other problem bigger than climate change or waste management that affects human beings all right Uh, moving forward with our presentation vismaya av is here who will now present her project uh vismaya i'll spotlight you and you can proceed with your presentation I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, it is loading. Vismaya. Yeah. yeah, it's visible. Vismaya, you can proceed. Yes, Okay, if you have some trouble with your presentation, I can play that on my laptop. Okay, sir, please do. Yeah. Wait, sir, can you see my presentation now? Yeah, it is visible. It is visible. But in case if you have some technical glitch, I'll play it on my laptop. Okay, thank you, sir. Hello, everyone. I'm Smyavi from Saint Thomas Residential School, and I am in class eight. so the road to my project or the inspiration to my project is how i found my topic is actually kind of funny my friend was the one who suggested me this topic she told me why don't i do about child obesity so since it is a major issue these days i thought i could give it a try and i got my inspiration to my project from a pedometer 
a pedometer is used to count how many steps each person takes. So I was wondering what if I design something related to the pedometer, but to encourage children to do physical activities more often. And that's how my idea to my project was born. And some fun fact is that in NSW, uh, New South Wales, in 2018, 24% aged between 5 to 16 years were overweight or obese, of whom 75% were overweight and 25% were obese. And between 1985 and 2004, the rate of childhood overweight and obesity more than doubled from 11 to 25. And other thing is that with four with 14.4 million obese children, India is the second la highest number of obese children in the world. And this is a lot and we have to try to reduce this as much as possible. Okay, the, uh, the name of my project is the companion star. So one of the factors of child obesity is less physical activities and the purpose of this project is to increase the physical activities of a child. The companion star contains of various features to promote the encouragement of working out. Some of the features are it has pulse reader. It is an additional setting, but it could really help. And the second thing is that it comes in pair. Uh, it, it comes in pair because one is for the guardian or the parent, or the second one is for the child. The guardian or the parent can monetize their children while they are doing, while they are using it, this project. And the third thing is that it has daily targets. To encourage children, it will have daily targets. For example, let's say do 50, uh, do 10 jumping, jump jacks. And if the child did this, then it will, she, he or she will receive a few points and it, this could really encourage them. Once they have reached a specific amount of points, they would kind of get an encouragement notification or something which can help them to get more interest in doing activities and continuing this method. And the fourth one is that it is waterproof and daily wear. It has to be waterproof because especially during this pandemic, we have to wash our hands two or three times a day. So we have to make it waterproof or else the gadget could get damaged a lot. And it has to be daily wear because every parent wants their child to work out daily. So, yeah. And it has monthly workout calendar. This is as the child can see how much workout the child has done the amount of time they have worked. And uh, the next is that it is child friendly. Uh, of course it has to be because children are using this by their own. And the advantages of this project is that the pulse reader can be used for medical purposes also. And uh, it, uh, it can help the child to have more interest in physical activities and workouts. The third one is, as I told before, the guardian can monetize or know the child's progress. And the, some of the drawbacks is that it could occur technical problems if it's not taken care properly. And second, it might be costly because it has a lot of features, but I don't want it to be costly because I want it to be available for everyone to everyone to, I want them uh, able to purchase this. The third one is that it has limited battery life. Even though it comes with a charger, everything has this own limits. It has to be charged frequently like a smartphone. So it doesn't mean that you have to buy it free, uh, you have to buy the battery again and again. Uh, this project hasn't been brought back, back to reality, even though I wanted to. So 
I will. I don't know how to make all these stuffs. So even if somebody wants to make it, in in reality, I'll be really thankful for them. It's just my overall view to make a. Uh, to reduce child obesity using technology there are other natural ways on other ways in which you can stop it but this is one of my ideas in which you could use to reduce child obesity thank you for your patient listening thank you bibox labs for presenting giving us this opportunity thank you our school thanks to my friends i am able to do this project thank you Okay, Vismaya tried to address a very uh, huge problem. At the end of every fifth year, we complained that we don't have enough medals in the Olympics, but we failed to realize that the kind of sedentary lifestyle that we are living, you know, it's something that you know needs to be changed. Okay, keep it up, uh, Vismaya. Uh, moving forward with our presentation, Durga B S. Durga uh, will now present her project. Yes, Durga, you can uh, proceed. So I hope you can see my screen. I'm Durga Bias. I'm studying class eight of Saint Thomas Residential School, and I'm here to speak on the topic and give my views on insecurity in afghanistan which is the current situation in afghanistan on our 75th independence day last month our media were always in joy and they also had to report a sad news that the president of afghanistan had fled and the uh, capital was in the taliban And on hearing the news, I was really terrified, and I couldn't help my brother. And I also remembered Malala Yousafzai, who uh, was shot by the Taliban just because she wanted to seek education. And that's how I got the topic that I'm presenting in front of you. Well, let's start with the cause and how Afghanistan is always prone to terrorist attacks. Decades back, itself, Afghanistan had been fighting against terrorism. And let's start with the Soviet-Afghan war, which occurred in nineteen seventy-nine between between the Soviet Union and, and Democratic Republic of Afghanistan on one side, and Mujahideen, a terrorist group, on the other side. But it unfortunately resulted in the victory of Mujahideen. It, this was followed by Second Afghan Civil War just after a decade in 1989, which also led to the victory of Mujahideen against the Republic of Afghanistan, and the regime changed and the identity of the nation changed to Islamic State of Afghanistan. Next was the first Taliban attack that took over Afghanistan in 1992. The Taliban took over the country and established the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. After the taking over the capital by Taliban, there had been constant fights and wars between the Taliban and the leaders of the Islamic State of Afghanistan. Then. Uh, Taliban and Al Qaeda had uh, unleashed terror all across the world. In two thousand one, the bombarding of World Trade Center, the capture of Indian Parliament are some examples. And after many wars, in two thousand thirteen, Taliban left the country due to the intervention of many nations across the world. Therefore, Afghanistan had always been prone to uh, terrorist attacks and Taliban attacks. And let me tell you who uh, are Taliban. Taliban is a terrorist group 
that claims to follow the faith of Islam. But the truth is that Taliban is an ideology that just claims that it's Islam, but it's much different from faith. So far, they have targeted Muslim countries just for the uphold of the claim that their ideology is Islam. Actually, their policies are much different and they are. They are against or oppressive of women education. We have seen them kill many educated women like professor, professors and women pilots also have created a separation between the male and female education. And the second policy is, uh, is that they don't agree with the idea of liberty. They also rule as an absolute power. And it's more like if you want to do something, either you have to follow them and obey what they say or be killed. And they also attack people of other communities or religions. They either kill them or compel them to convert to jihadism. Jihadism is the following of terrorism and working for terrorism. The current Afghan problems are lack of leadership. As the president fled, there had been a confusion in the nation to whom they should choose as the leader. And then there is a lack of political will. The country has not been given an answer to why they fight against terrorism. And no single leadership or authority is there to instill bravery in their minds to choose liberty over life and terror. And there has been a fear in people's minds as the Taliban and terror took over the country. The uh, political disunity has caused the uh, fear in people's mind to keep silence and be terrified against Taliban. And there has been a uh, big disunity in people's idea whether to choose to fight against Taliban or to remain silent and obey them. And there is a lack of national integration. That is, uh, the people love their country, but they are all, all afraid to fight against the Taliban for their country. And as the country's central authority is not very strong, and the leadership is not present, they don't dare to trust anyone and lose their lives. So they are always needing an external authority or group to lead them. And we see that there's no sure solution, but what they need is a strong leader who can gather their trust and courage to make them aware of why they must fight and make them courageous and wipe away their fears. And they should have more nationalism and every citizen must be ready to fight not just for themselves but also for their country. And they shouldn't just want a change in Taliban's policy but the change in the whole idea of Talibanism. They should have a spirit of brotherhood so, that, so as to stay united in spirit of all terrors and disunity in ideas. And they should not only be given necessary arms from other nations, but also give them the courage and reason why they must fight. Because a uh, reason, of course, is something that everyone should be aware to need a change. And there is a uh, certain possibilities that this solution may not work, that emergence of leader is hard as there can be many oppressions and violence against the world. And if someone dares to revolt, the Taliban may kill them and they close every chance of a revolt. And if someone dares to plan for a revolt or a plan against the Taliban, it cannot be secret as the Taliban is always spying the citizens and secrecy of any planning is under threat and instilling bravery and nationalism to a frightened citizenship is not so easy unless an apto occurs against the Taliban. And citizens should unite as a nation, but many may move back from fight and war as any war causes bloodshed and they may lose their lives as well as of their loved ones.
to any person choosing liberty over life is difficult thank you i hope you could hear me and i thank the box labs to giving me an opportunity to present my views i thank my school and my dear friends for paying attention thank you okay durga keep it up very well done it's evident that you've put in a lot of effort into preparing this presentation uh, yeah so that was a very well presented presentation uh, moving forward uh, karen sarah roshan is here who will now present her project Good evening, everyone. I'm Karen Sara Roshan of AT from Saint Thomas Residential School, and I'm here to tell about the topic climate change. Let's see what climate change is. Climate change is the change in the usual climate that occurs due to human activities that leads to increase or increase in atmospheric temperature. The main factors that lead to climate change are burning of fossil fuels by burning uh, fossil fuels such as coal oil wood etc a large amount of carbon dioxide and methane are released and they trap heat in the earth's atmosphere which lead to climate change uh, next point is deforestation uh, trees are called the lungs of the planet because they take carbon dioxide and give out fresh oxygen but nowadays trees are being cut down for human luxuries and the amount of carbon dioxide has been released the increase which is very harmful to uh, the nature causing climate change fertilizers containing nitrogen farmers use fertilizers for their agricultural uh, activities but if the fertilizers contain nitrogen they produce nitrous oxide which in, which increase warming effect on the earth's atmosphere now the story behind why i chose this project is that one day i was reading the hindu and i saw an article about ice melting in antarctica due to this climate change a lot of polar bears have been suffering due to this climate change but not only polar bears from antarctica but many organisms like uh, snow leopard giant panda tiger monarch butterfly green sea turtle etc are getting endangered humans and wild animals face new challenges for survival because of climate change so i took this opportunity to spread awareness about climate change and its consequences the earth that we live in are not only really for us but also for every single creature let's see what we can do to fix this we have to plant more trees to maintain the required forest level as prescribed by the un we have to reduce the level of burning of fossil fuels and fa factories must reduce the emission of harmful gases we have to avoid the usage of fertilizers which contain harmful gases like nitrogen and let's see the advantages by following the above measures we can bring back our earth to an extinction we can reduce the number of endangered species skin cancer caused by climate change will be reduced we get pure uh, and fresh oxygen in polluted places we get sustainable public transport systems in cities I thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my views on climate change and for paying attention to my presentation. Very well done Karen keep it up again you try to address a problem which is you know which has uh, a global presence so keep it up next uh, Dia and Varke will present her project Dia, I'll spotlight you and you can proceed. Uh, yes, I hope my screen is visible. So, hello everyone, yes. I am Dia and Berkey, studying in Standard 8 in Division E of St. Thomas Residential School. 
So my inspiration for this project is that we've all learned in school that it is bad to waste electricity. And I've realized that myself, that I forget to switch off the lights most of the time. Many times I remember going out of my room to do something for a short while, getting distracted and then completely forgetting to come back and switch off the lights. And every time this happened, I would get scolded for wasting electricity. And all the time I would say, I'll remember next time, but still I would forget and the cycle goes on. So I thought that it would be a good idea to have an automatic light switch that switches off sometime after you leave a room. So the title and purpose, the title of this project is an automatic light switch. How it works is that when at least one person enters the room, the light switches on and when everyone exits, it automatically switches off. The main purpose is to save electricity. Saving electricity means that we will be reducing pollution from machinery, indirectly helping wildlife. Also, it generally boosts the human health by reducing diseases like asthma and lung cancer. Conserving electricity also reduces the number of power plants needed and thus reduces a lot of noise and safety hazards for the residents. Many forms of energy are also produced from finite resources, for example, uranium. The planet is not capable of making additional uranium supplies, and by using less energy, we are ensuring that our future generations can get access to affordable energy sources. Another reason is that it also ensures constant safe water supply because most, most of the electricity is generated from hydroelectric power plants and reduced usage of energy helps in reducing the amount of water used. Advantages is that it is good for the environment. It also makes it easier to switch off the lights for older people who are often forgetful and we forget to switch off the lights when leaving a room. It also reduces electricity bills, uh, like when someone re leaves the room and forgets to switch off the lights, it may stay on for hours and hours, wasting a lot of electricity. Drawbacks is that the light switch will uh, turn off immediately after everyone leaves the room. So if you're planning on coming back after a few minutes, um, it, it may be a prob small problem. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone for your patient listening. And I would like to thank uh, ATL Lab for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Okay, keep it up. Uh, we are very well presented. Uh, moving forward, and the last participant is Gopika Lal Nair will now present her project. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, Gopika. Please proceed. Sir, can you screen, uh, see my screen? Uh, Gopika, it's not visible. It's still uh, loading, I think. It's not visible. Uh, so now can you see? Uh, no, it's not visible, Gopika. Okay, just give me a minute. I'll try to load your presentation in my laptop. So can you see now? Uh, yes, yes, Gopika. It's visible. So uh, good evening to one and all. So today I am here to present my project on detecting phishing websites using associative classification. So today I'm going to talk about why I chose this topic and the uh, introduction to my project and the requirements, application, advantages and disadvantages of the proposed project and where I got the reference from. So why I chose this topic? I chose this topic because of an incident that happened recently to my mother. Like a few months ago, my mother was checking Facebook and she saw a vegetable chopper in Facebook marketplace. And as she was in need of a vegetable, vegetable chopper, she thought of buying the product and she completed all the transaction procedures. But even after three months, the product hasn't arrived yet. And she understood that it was a fake website and she got cheated. So there are many other incidents where people are getting cheated by misunderstanding fake websites for the real ones. So I thought of solving this problem and I searched for some kind of a solution and I found out that we can use data mining algorithm to solve this issue. So I'm going to talk about the phishing. During the last decade, 
most of the financial government organizations have extended their online services to their clients and now with this pandemic situation uh, the uh, you um, and with the emerging use of smartphones increasing number of people are depending on online services to shop check their banking account pay their bills or even play with some anonymous friends while such activities are having an important impact on the world economy such large dependence on the online financial services increases security risks for both the customers and the financial institutions and the fisher typically creates web pages that are visually very similar to the real web pages in order to scam their victims and an unaware client might be easily deceived by this kind of scam the and the aim of the phishing websites is to steal the victim's personal information by visiting and surfing a fake website uh, that looks like the true one of a bank or a company and ask the victim to enter personal information such as their username account maybe credit card details etc and the attackers might also commit identity theft crimes using the victim's stolen info information Phishing has a huge negative impact on the organization's revenues, customer relationships, marketing efforts, and overall corporate image. And the requirements: we uh, the software requirements for this project are Windows 7 or higher, a WAMP server, Notepad, and MySQL 5.6 software. And the hardware components are processor, Core i3. a hard disk of 160 gb a memory of 1 gb ram and a monitor and a stable internet connection the application is the system will be useful for many e-commerce enterprises and many uh, and also for many people who prefer online shopping and um, the advantages of this project is that the system can be used by many e-commerce websites in order to have a good customer relationship and users can make online payments securely and they can also purchase products online without any hesitation and the disadvantages are if the internet connection fails the system won't work and the, all the e-banking website related data will be stored in one place and i got the references from nevernprojects.com and iist.org and ije csr.com thank you uh, very well done gopika uh, so that was the last participant and that brings uh, this project presentation to the end and uh, before we uh, you know call it a show i would just like to you know mention about uh, my experience with you it's been phenomenal over the past 10 sessions i hope you have something positive to take back home right so we tried to instill a sense of innovation within you i could see the originality that you had you know um, you know through which you had made your projects right so i mentioned originality so it was clearly evident okay so that is all that we have in this project presentation i hope you all enjoyed it and all the very best with your future endeavors and do well in life